At the end of April, our community art space, Seven Miles Out, will be closing its doors for the final time. Over the last five years, Seven Miles Out has hosted hundreds of creative events and been home to a diverse community made up of local people of all ages. Most importantly, the space has given a much needed platform to a number of young, talented bands who hope to follow in the footsteps of Stockport's very own Blossoms. We had hoped to continue the work we do supporting the local community by creating a modern market in the produce hall. The idea was to build on the delivery of our highly popular music, arts and cultural events in Stockport Old Town, including the award-winning Foodie Friday, by creating a permanent hub for food, drink and entertainment in the marketplace. We submitted our plans to Stockport Council in September of last year, in partnership with four independent street food traders from Stockport, as well as a local microbrewery. Our proposal was built upon firm financial foundations, having secured a combined investment of £100,000 from our delivery partners, as well as developed a 50-page business plan. We asked the council for support of £50,000 and projected to return a significant profit to them after only two years of operations. After submitting our bid, we were soon informed that we had the opportunity to present our proposals to a selection panel, consisting of three council officers and the commercial director of the Royal Bank of Scotland, Mike Lamont. A day before our presentation, we were informed by the council that another bidder had invited the selection panel to visit an example of their proposed offer, which we were surprised about as we'd been informed at the beginning of the process that canvassing of officers or other persons involved in this process will automatically disqualify potential tenants from the process. The council said they wanted to ensure that all bidders were given an equal opportunity. So we were even more surprised when they rejected our invitation to visit Foodie Friday. We then sent an email requesting that the panel visit seven miles out in order to meet the delivery partners involved in our bid. But this was ignored for two weeks before we eventually received a reply, which said that this was probably unnecessary. A month later, we received a visit from council officers, Caroline Simpson and Paul Richards, who informed us that the Labour Cabinet had accepted the panel's recommendations and awarded the operations for the produce hall to Steve Pilling. We asked if the panel had visited Steve Pilling's restaurants, despite rejecting our offer to visit Foodie Friday and Seven Miles Out, and they confirmed that they had. We also found out that the council had been sent a report by consultant Gemma Hines from Foodsync, prior to the decision being made, which stated that giving Foodie Friday a residency where there is no evening footfall would be a risk. If you've ever been to Foodie Friday, you'll know that this statement is not based on any real evidence. It surely couldn't be down to the fact that Mr. Pilling is listed as an advisor and associate to Foodsync on their website, could it? After the announcement was made, many people have suggested to us that Steve Pilling must have presented the council with a much more financially attractive proposition than ours. Now that is an incredibly sensible conclusion to make as Steve Pilling is an established private businessman after all. But based on information we have received since the decision was made, we don't believe that is necessarily the case. At a full council meeting in January, Councillor Patrick McCauley asked Councillor Kate Butler what due diligence had been done to make sure that the significant council investment into Mr Pilling's business was being protected. You may remember Councillor McCauley from the time he refused to back council plans to hand the market hall over to a private businessman and resigned his cabinet post in protest. Take a look at the questions he asked and the response he received from Councillor Butler. The members will remember uh, at the last council meeting, Councillor Butler uh, informed us of uh, the uh, developments in the uh, Stockport market, uh, particularly in relation to uh, Steve Pilling uh, winning the contract for uh, the produce hall. I myself have done some research uh, in relation to the um, uh, Mr Pilling and it does uh, concern me that the, he's been involved in projects that, uh, or he's, he's given an intention to start projects that haven't come to fruition and uh, also uh, failed in um, Salford Keys. Now, my first question, uh, and I do have uh, a few, Madam Mayor, is what due diligence has been done uh, in and around uh, Mr Pilling to ensure that the, uh, the council's investment that they'll be making, which is significant, uh, is protected? Thank you. Councillor Butler? 
Uh, thanks for your question. Um, I'm not in a position to comment on the business of an independent businessman. Um, I think if you do some further research, you will find the answers that you're looking for. Um, in terms of due diligence, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you want to know, councillor. Um, due diligence has been done, is being done. We're working very closely with Ms. Tell me exactly what you want. What I think is, is, is necessary, what people okay. would like to know is what security okay. does the council have for the investment that they are making, which is near a half a million pounds that the council will not get back. Okay. Councillor McCauley, I have to stop you at this point because this question is commercially sensitive and in, because of that reason there won't be a response at this moment in time. Madam Mayor, the, the, the question isn't commercially sensitive. I, what, what I'm after I've is... I've been advised what that the question is commercially sensitive. Thank Madam you. Mayor, I'm deeply concerned that officers are trying well, to shut I'm, I'm down sorry. democratic debate in this situation. I, I'm Councilor deeply McCauley, concerned that I've, I've democratic explained. debate has been shut down. Councillor McCauley, I'm not shutting you down. I'm just explaining that this is commercially sensitive and we will send you a written response without fail. I'll make sure that happens. Councillor McCauley has since informed us that he did not receive a letter, but was instead invited to a private meeting between Councillor Kate Butler and Steve Pilling, which he politely declined. After watching this statement, I decided to ask Councillor Butler myself on social media how much public money was being spent on a private business in a public building. She wasn't too happy with the fact that I was asking this question and sharing it with our different communities. So she decided to ask her followers what to call us in response. She then responded that she liked the suggestion, sock puppet wankers. Now some of you might be wondering, aren't there rules to protect against the council doing a deal with a private businessman in which they might lose a significant amount of money? And you're right, there are. But it just so happens that our council decided to ignore them all by not conducting a professional procurement process, despite Councillor Butler's claim on Twitter, that this was a professional competitive tender. Instead, the council now admits that this was not a procurement responsibility, but was instead a standard leasehold agreement, which was not subject to the rules that govern a professional procurement process, including the need to ensure fair dealing by ensuring that suppliers are treated without unfair discrimination, the need to ensure that no gifts or hospitality are accepted from any bidders, and the need to ensure value for money and provide transparency. Whilst the outcome of this decision was disappointing, to find out that it did not follow the rules that govern a professional procurement process is concerning to us, and it should be concerning to anybody who values professional oversight of their public institutions, especially when awarding a public building to a private operator. Instead of avoiding rules and insulting local residents, I believe our local councillors should be working to support local people in collaboration with bodies like the Centre for Local Economic Strategies. That is the kind of open and innovative approach to local growth that our town needs. Not one that bankrolls a businessman so he can privatise his gains and socialise his losses. Although it's hard to believe that this Labour cabinet could have agreed to a deal which will lose half a million pounds of public money, just listen to the current leader of the council explain the strategy himself. We're making investments across the town centre in terms of how it links to things. So there are certain investments we're making where we think it will make a loss, but it's investment that's needed to transform that uh, area of the town centre that otherwise wouldn't happen. But it's fine because that's offset by the profit that we feel we can comfortably make with profit with, with investments elsewhere. So actually, some of the investments we are making, especially in the Manx area and the market area, we are making as part of that wider strategy and that wider vision because if we don't, then actually financially um, they won't stack up and the Borough Treasurer would not allow us to make um, those uh, investments. It's fairly staggering that five months after this decision was made, we've still not had any feedback about our application from council officers, despite being promised a comprehensive response. But hopefully with your help, we can finally get some answers. So if you're interested to know if this Labour cabinet have really agreed to a deal which will lose half a million pounds, especially when they've just decided to raise council tax for the second year running, I'd encourage you to sign our petition to reveal the deal with Steve Pilling and end any ambiguity and confusion over this deal once and for all.